Fred Show. Welcome to the Fred Show. Welcome to the Fred Show. Welcome to our deep dive into how Johannesburg can transform its public safety and quality of life by learning from New York City's successful strategies under Mayor Giuliani. Now, I know what you're thinking. Trevor, comparing Joburg to New York, those are two very different beasts and you'd be right. But that's the beauty of this, isn't it? We're not talking about copy-pasting solutions. We're talking about taking inspiration, learning from the successes, and yes, even the failures and adapting them to Joburg's unique context. Because let's be honest, everyone deserves to feel safe in their city, whether you're navigating the streets of Times Square or strolling through Maboneng. All right, let's kick things off with a concept that sounds counterintuitive, but trust me on this one, the broken windows theory. Imagine a building with a broken window. Now, if that window isn't fixed, it sends a message, doesn't it? It says nobody cares, nobody's watching, and things are kind of falling apart around here. It's like a silent signal that neglect is acceptable. That, my friends, is an open invitation for more serious crime. It's like rolling out the red carpet for trouble. This is where cracking down on minor offenses comes in. Addressing these small issues can prevent bigger problems down the line. We're talking illegal dumping, public urination, petty theft, the works. These seemingly minor infractions can add up, creating a chaotic environment. These might seem small, but they create an environment of disorder that can escalate to more serious problems. It's like a snowball effect. Now, I'm not saying we need to go full-on Robocop on anyone caught littering, but a visible law enforcement presence addressing these issues head-on can make a world of difference. It's about being proactive rather than reactive. Think about it. If you see a police officer dealing with graffiti or public drinking, it sends a message that someone's paying attention, that the rules are enforced, and that maybe, just maybe, you should think twice before doing something stupid. There's got to be only in New York, right? This, that, that, this, if somebody urinates in public, the person is telling you, I got a big problem. <laughs> this is what broken windows theory is all about. about I mean, if some happen? guy is urinating in public, He's, we got a we got a problem. Now you can do one of two things. You can ignore the problem and say, "Gee, I'm such a big um, fuzzy-headed liberal that I'm going to walk away from it, and we're going to make believe there's no problem." That's New York City in the 1980s. That's New York City with 2,000 murders. That's New York City with 500,000 uh, crimes. You have to pay attention to people urinating on the streets, and you have to get people to stop urinating on the streets. That's, that, that's moving toward civilization. That's moving toward decency. That's what, I, that's what I mean by a decent society that people want to invest in, people want their children to live in. You've got to pay attention to somebody urinating on the street. It may be a minor thing, it may be a serious thing, but you cannot ignore it. You have to deal with it. It is against the law to urinate in public. If the next mayor would like to change that and invite people to urinate in public, then I guarantee you I will be the most popular mayor in the entire century about three years from now. Thank you. It's a subtle but powerful form of social control. It's about creating a sense of order, of accountability. And that, my friends, is a powerful deterrent. When people see that the small things are taken care of, they believe that the bigger things will be too. Let's talk about something we can all agree on. Nobody enjoys living in filth. When a city looks neglected with overflowing bins, broken streetlights and potholes the size of small cars, it impacts everything. It affects morale, it affects property values and yes, it affects crime. This is where quality of life initiatives come in. We're talking about prioritizing basic services like street cleaning, fixing those pesky potholes, ensuring street lights actually work, and maintaining public spaces. This isn't just about aesthetics, folks, although nobody's complaining about a prettier city. This is about restoring faith in the city government, showing residents that their concerns are heard, and creating a sense of community pride. Because when people take pride in their surroundings, they're more likely to look out for each other to report suspicious activity and to work together to keep their neighborhoods safe. It's about creating an environment where crime feels unwelcome 
Not because of fear, but because people genuinely care about their city. Now let's get down to business, data business. In the 21st century, we can't rely on gut feelings and hunches to fight crime. We need hard data, and that's where CompStat comes in. This revolutionary system, first implemented in New York City, uses data analysis to identify crime hotspots, track trends, and allocate resources where they're needed most. Imagine a heat map of the city, with areas of high crime intensity glowing like a bad sunburn. That's CompStat in action. It allows law enforcement to see the bigger picture, to understand where crime is concentrated, and to deploy officers strategically. But it's not just about reacting to crime, it's about predicting it, about identifying patterns and addressing the root causes. This data-driven approach also brings a new level of transparency and accountability to policing. By tracking crime statistics, resource allocation, and police activity, CompStat helps identify areas for improvement and ensures that everyone is held accountable for their actions. Let's be real, folks. The government can't do everything. And that's where the private sector comes in. Public-private partnerships are like a match made in urban renewal heaven. By collaborating with private companies, Johannesburg can tap into a wealth of resources, expertise, and innovation. Think about it. Private companies can invest in infrastructure projects, create job opportunities, and revitalize neglected areas. TV video days it is. So today we're going to introduce you guys to Onico, which is the first artificial intelligence company moving from Santon all the way to Johannesburg CBD. And guys, we are going to show you the amazing work that they have done with the building and guess what they have 240 staff members working in this building it's incredible guys i don't know what to say but we're going to show you guys the building from the basement this to the not top only boosts the economy but also creates a safer more vibrant city it's about working together pooling resources and creating a win-win situation for everyone involved Imagine abandoned buildings transformed into thriving businesses, neglected parks turned into community hubs, and once crime-ridden streets now bustling with life. That's the power of public-private partnerships in action. Chapter 5. Zero tolerance for dirty cops cleaning up the force. Let's address the elephant in the room. Corruption. It's a topic that makes everyone uncomfortable, but it's one we can't ignore. It's a cancer that eats away at trust, undermines the law, and makes it nearly impossible to create a safe and just society. Corruption erodes the very foundation of our community. To truly transform Johannesburg's public safety landscape, we need a zero-tolerance approach to corruption within the police force and municipal government. This is not just a policy, but a commitment to integrity. This means holding corrupt officials accountable, no matter their rank or connections. No one should be immune to justice. It means implementing transparent accountability measures, strengthening internal affairs investigations, and creating independent oversight bodies. These steps are crucial for restoring faith in our institutions. It's about sending a clear message that corruption will not be tolerated, that no one is above the law, and that the days of getting away with shady dealings are over. We must be unwavering in our resolve. This might not be easy, folks, but it's absolutely essential. The road to reform is long and challenging, but the rewards are worth it. Because when citizens trust their police force, when they believe that the system is fair and just, they're more likely to cooperate, to report crimes, and to work together to create a safer city. Trust is the cornerstone of a thriving community. Chapter 6. Building Bridges, Not Walls. The Importance of Community Policing. Now, let's talk about the heart and soul of effective policing, community engagement. This isn't just about having more police officers on the streets. It's about changing the way they interact with the communities they serve. Community policing is about building relationships, fostering trust, and working together to address the root causes of crime. Imagine police officers attending community meetings, organizing youth outreach programs, and simply taking the time to get to know the people they serve. 
This isn't about being soft on crime. It's about being smart on crime prevention. When communities trust the police, they're more likely to report crimes, provide valuable information, and work together to keep their neighborhoods safe. It's about breaking down barriers, building bridges, and creating a sense of shared responsibility for public safety. Chapter seven. More than just a roof addressing homelessness and housing. Let's be clear, folks, homelessness isn't a crime. It's a societal issue that requires our collective attention and action. It's a complex issue with a myriad of causes from poverty and mental health to addiction and lack of affordable housing. Each of these factors contributes to the larger problem, making it a multifaceted challenge. And while enforcement is necessary to ensure public spaces are safe and clean, it's only one piece of the puzzle. We must look beyond immediate solutions and think long term. We need to address the root causes of homelessness by increasing access to affordable housing, ensuring that everyone has a place to call home, providing support services for those in need, including mental health care, addiction treatment and social services, and creating pathways for people to get back on their feet. This includes job training programs and employment opportunities. This isn't just about compassion, folks, although that's a good start. It's about taking concrete actions to make a difference. It's about creating a more just and equitable society, one where everyone has the opportunity to thrive, a society where no one is left behind. Imagine a city where everyone has a safe and affordable place to call home, a place where families can grow and prosper, where support services are readily available, ensuring that help is always within reach and where people are given the tools they need to break the cycle of homelessness. This includes education, job training, and community support. That's the kind of city we should all strive to build, a city that reflects our values and our commitment to each other. Ultra a safer, more vibrant Johannesburg, a shared vision for the future. By applying these strategies with adaptations to Johannesburg's unique context, the city's new mayor can enhance public safety, improve quality of life, and foster economic growth. Transparency, accountability, and community engagement will be key to successful implementation. Remember, folks, creating a safer city isn't just the responsibility of the government or the police. It's a collective effort. It requires participation from every single one of us. So let's work together to build a Johannesburg where everyone feels safe, where communities thrive, and where the future is bright. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more insights.